Uh, let me welcome you to our talk, Advanced System Profiling, Tracing and Trace Analysis with Perfetto. Or better, um, I think we uh, have our na uh, talk a bit named wrong. I think the better title would be uh, Advanced Your System Profiling, Tracing and Trace Analysis Experience with Perfetto, because we don't do a uh, tracing introduction or tracing internals talk. We want to show you um, how, to, how you can do the best uh, for your system developer experience, for your tracing experience with Perfetto as a tool. And before we start, we want to introduce ourselves. So this is my colleague, Annalena. Um, she is at Innovex, our company, since uh, 2015. She has a master degree in embedded system engineering, and as a hobby, she does uh, studying electrical engineering. And Stefan is with Innovex since 2017, but working as a professional embedded system developer since 2014, and has many, uh, many more years as a Linux enthusiast. He also has some kernel patches, as far as I know. And then let us start with Perfetto, uh, or with our agenda for today. Yeah, the agenda for today. So we will look into Perfetto. Um, what is Perfetto? Give an overview about that. Then we look into how you can do tracing in Linux in general, on Yocto and other systems, and how you can do tracing with Perfetto on Android. After that, we look at the Perfetto SDK, which you can use to add custom trace events into your application. And then and, and at the end, we go to looking at the Perfetto UI and show some tips and tricks, um, how you can analyze your traces and your system with Perfetto. And after that, of course, we do a recap to summarize all up and then. So let's start with Perfetto as a tool. Um, but first, why do we speak about an Android tool on a Linux conference? Um, at Innovex, we historically started not with Linux embedded, but with Android embedded. And both of us have several years uh, experience in Android embedded in big projects. And in these projects, we learned to know and to love the precessor from uh, Perfetto, the um, SysTrace tool and the previous UI, and remembered it as a really handy tool. And now the successor, uh, Perfetto, is available for basically um, all large platforms for uh, Android, but also for Linux. Uh, there's a recipe in Yocto for this, this uh, a bit catch line uh, title. And we thought uh, this is a great platform to show you what we do with this tool and what you also can do to improve your tracing experience. And as we said, we started with the old SysTrace tool. This had this catapult UI. Um, that doesn't look that great, but it was really handy. Now we have this new and shiny thing, Perfetto. Basically, it's the same, but a bit more, uh, yeah, a bit more clean uh, and a bit more usable. And it also works on all major platforms, basically, and it's really a great improvement. But what is Perfetto? Perfetto is not uh, a new approach to tracing uh, in all. It's not a replacement for F-Trace for everything uh, Linux already has. It's uh, a bit more framework and a tool uh, around all of this. And it's basically split up in three major parts, in recording traces, analyzing traces, and visualizing traces. And for this, we start with uh, the Tracebox tool. Um, which is part of Perfetto for uh, recording traces in, in Linux and in Android, but it's also integrated in uh, Android, in Chrome, 
And there's also this Perfetto SDK um, Stefan also mentioned, which enables uh, adding this Perfetto tracing into your own implication. The trace processor is also used in the available web UI um, and utilized by this, but this is not the only UI, it's also integrated in Android Studio, the Android GPU Inspector, and the UI, this web UI, but also the Android Studio integration can uh, directly load trace files, for example, via ADB from your Android phone. And let's process with recording traces in Linux. Um, as we mentioned in the title, it's available in Yocto itself. Um, it's uh, really a no-brainer adding it into Yocto. The only um, bit bad point is the version included in Yocto um, is pretty old. It's uh, really far behind the current uh, head um, of releases. Um, if you want to trace in Yocto, it's sometimes handy to add some other tools than just Perfetto. For example, to have S-Trace, GDB, and debug symbols in general. Um, just add a debug tools and debug pad, uh, package headers. Um, if you are working on Intel, there are some other tools available too. Um, but if you want to work with this Yocto version, there's one little issue. This version has a bug. The bug is pretty simple, but it's not fixed in the Yocto release right now. But you can do it yourself. It's really a typo. Just patch it with a BB append and have fun tracing in Yocto um, with the Tracebox tool. This tool um, just bundles several tracing services and the Perfetto command line client. You can uh, use it in several modes and ways. The pretty most simplest is this out of start mode, but there are also um, several others in this trace box uh, manual mode. Um, I want to tell a bit more about the trace box out of start mode. This is, uh, in fact, just a, a really handy wrapper around F-Trace uh, itself. You can tell it, uh, record a trace for, I don't think, uh, I don't know, um, 10 seconds, name uh, output file, and tell it which uh, F-Trace event you want to record. There's uh, a little issue with this. Um, if you don't uh, know what F-Trace events are, um, this is not a right talk for you, but there are other ones. If you want to know the uh, available F-Trace events, you can just run this command and get a list. There is one thing you have to uh, recognize. The um, group and event names are separated with a colon in this list, while uh, the trace box binary um, uses the slash. It doesn't complain if you use a colon, but it doesn't work. It doesn't produce a usable trace, so uh, remember using this slash here. But uh, just using this auto uh, start mode doesn't really bring plus, but this tracebox config files does. Uh, they're basically um, configuration to which says how long do you want to trace, what do you want to trace, and how. Um, it's pretty simple to use them with just a command. And let's have a deeper look inside these files. Um, at first, you name a, a duration, how long you want to trace. Then you need at least one buffer. You can, for example, have um, several buffers for several data sources. These buffers um, can be ring buffers that are overwritten if the data fills up, 
or discard it. Discard has some uh, side effects, so it's not necessarily uh, recommendable. And a buffer is um, linked in one data source. You can have several data sources right to one buffer, but also uh, each data source to its own buffer. And a data source consists of the actual source, in this case, uh, for example, linux.ftrace. But you can also use basically all Linux uh, statistics, tracing, and similar mechanisms. But for Android, also the Android specific ones or whatever system you have. And you have this ftrace events call uh, named. You can just uh, list the events you're interested in. I add some examples, but you can also uh, add all of them. And it's also um, possible to um, just use the name and the name um, and a group. And also here, uh, use the slash and not a column. And this file uses a PBTX format, a protobuffer format. Um, if you have the textual, textual repre uh, representation, pass it with this text uh, flag. Um, if you do some uh, benchmarking on different machines, it's a bit better to convert it to binary format to uh, achieve the same output, uh, the same behavior on uh, different machines. Um, I added some links for more examples on the file scheme. And now, further with Stefan and recording traces in Android. Yeah, we looked at how we do recording traces in Linux, and now we look how it works in Android, and what should I say? Um, in Android, it's much, much simpler than in the Yocto and Linux setup. So if you have an Android board, uh, for example, flash with an AOSP, or you have an Android smartphone, all the tools, Perfetto, Tracebox, all, all, all are already installed. You have nothing to do, and you just have to enable ADB on your device, for example, your smartphone, and visit the Perfetto UI, and you can start tracing through the UI. There's, um, and this is already integrated since Android 9 and 10, so if you have a recent board uh, or recent smartphone, everything works out of the box, and you have nothing to install. It will just work. Um, if you use the Android, uh, if you use um, Chromium to run the Perfetto UI in your browser and you want to record a trace uh, via ADB directly with your smartphone or your, uh, your Android device um, attached via USB, there's one issue if you have Chromium installed as a snap. Um, you maybe get this error that USB device uh, has access denied. Uh, the problem is not a Unix permission problem on the USB device, it's, uh, it's a sandbox problem. So the solution is that you have to tell Snap that this Chromium Snap has access to raw USB and raw USB, and then also the Perfetta UI inside the Chromium, which then uses web USB, it's a new interface, can access the USB device and record directly the trace from your device. So if you want to record uh, traces on, on your Android device, you have three possible ways to do that. Uh, you can either use, as already told, the Perfetta UI in the browser. There's a link, you, you can, there's a button you can cl click on and select the device and start your traces, even with some nice um, configuration overview, which is um, guided by a UI. The mm -hmm. second option is to use the Perfetta command line tool, which is on the device. So it's the same as in the Linux case, where you have the Perfetto and Tracebox tool on the device, that is also possible uh, on Android. But a much nicer version is the Record Android Trace helper script. It's a helper script provided by Google that you can download, which runs then on your host machine, connects also via ADB to your device, where you can configure things, start the tracing, stop the tracing, pulls the trace data back on your host machine, and already starts the Perfetti UI in your browser, which is everything nicely integrated in the tool we call Android Trace. 
The thing is, why does the tool exist? Because this tool is the replacement of the sysTrace.py uh, uh, um, Python tooling that was available in the NDK the last years, but sysTrace catapult is deprecated. It was removed from the SDK, from the Android SDK. And if you do want to do tracing now, you should not use sysTrace.py anymore, but record Android trace. And with that, we look into the Perfetto SDK and how you can add custom trace events into your application. Yes. Um, if you do tracing, you actually want to trace, uh, in the most cases, not only the system, but also your own um, application. For this, uh, adding the tools is quite easy and quite straightforward. It's uh, here more listed for documentation. Um, it's uh, basically optimized for CMake, just add it there. And at the initia uh, init initialization in your app, and then you have some nice trace macros you can use. They're called drag events. This is not a typo, they're actually called drag events, even if the macro is named trace events. And they're basically the easiest way for custom trace events in your uh, C++ um, application. And the most for straightforward way are uh, adding slices. This is the basic type. There are, uh, you can just add this trace event um, slice into your um, function, for example. Slices are can I say, a, a bit like a box um, in the UI, marking the start and the end of your uh, function. They are uh, auto uh, life cycle, so you just add them at the start of your function and they're ended uh, with the function um, without doing, some, uh, doing anything. And yeah, quite easy to use. You um, you add this trace event with a category and a name, mostly the function name, but as uh, listed in this table, there are also quite sophisticated way to use this trace events with lambdas, with key and value, and with a lot of more options if you look into the documentation. Um, another really capable mechanism are the flow track events. They allow you to link two or more events and make mark them as related. This is really, really great and helpful for um, debugging and uh, analyzing inter-process communication. We uh, look into these flows a bit later too. And the last basic type of the track events are counters. They're really straightforward and can help you to uh, have a deeper look into uh, your application, for example, for memory usage or for whatever you want to count. And integrating them in the code is also pretty simple. At first, you have to define a category, set a description, and allocate some event static storage. And then it's basically just adding the macro after you have the initialization in your application. Um, as said, these trace events are uh, with auto lifetime, so it's not needed to uh, do a start and the end in your function, just add this macro and it does this for you automatically. And if you want to do the actual tracing, it's just one more thing to add. You need your trace config um, with a self-defined track event for your category. You can enable um, several ca uh, categories or disable the things you don't want to see in exactly this trace. So it's super handy to use. And uh, if you want to use flows, it's a bit longer. 
it uh, looks a bit more complicated, but it isn't. Flows are uh, basically marked by this uh, Perfetto flow process scoped and linked by a, a request ID. Basically, um, some ID you give it them, it must be unique, but uh, the, this ID is the thing that really marks them as related. And you have two types, one uh, the non-terminating um, flow um, markers and the terminating ones. These are the things uh, that mark how the errors flows. And so you can really debug and see into your, your inter-process communication. Um, it's, yeah, it's really helpful and pretty much easy to use. Um, at last, this tracing SDK has also uh, an option for implementing completely custom data sources, more custom than this track events. Um, by implementing this uh, data source interface, your own, you can use it if you have really specific use cases where the straight track events aren't enough. But uh, in the most cases, it would be also necessary to change the um, trace processor so it understands your um, data source for, uh, format. So uh, it's mostly not necessary, but you can. And for this, we don't uh, talk about this here. And further with uh, the SDK with Android. So we have seen how you can use the Perfetto SDK to add custom trace events to your application, um, which you can use on any platform, so Linux, iOS, and other platforms where, uh, for example, Android, where um, per Perfetto runs. But if you look up the documentation of Perfetto and look at the use case for Android and ask, so should I use the Perfetto SDK on Android? And the answer is from the Perfetto developers, mm, only if you have a very, very specific use case, nevertheless, you can just use the existing infrastructure. And the existing infrastructure um, is in Java, the android.os.trace functions, and in the NDK for C and C++ are these atrace underscore begin and end section functions. So you can use the Android SDK also on Android, but uh, also in my projects, I have not yet seen the need. I just use the existing um, a trace functions and they also work in Perfetto. So we have seen how we can use the Perfetto SDK and what Perfetto is. Now we look into how we analyze uh, a trace or your system with the Perfetto UI and command line tooling. Um, short, short introduction. So if you not have seen uh, SysTrace or Perfetto yet, uh, in depth, you maybe know these flame gas um, from Linux, for example, here's an image from Brenton Gregg, and these flame gas are really, really useful to have a look into the application and see problems, see performance bottlenecks, and the short version is cat the old catapult trace viewer and also the new Perfetto UI is a, is a flame graph on steroids, so much much bigger, much, much more information, much easier to use and give a much deeper look into your system, which we see in one second. So here is the, an overview over the Perfetto UI. You have on the left side the menu um, where you can, for example, open a trace. You can record a new trace, for example, with ADB. Um, and you can also do some things with the current trace, for example, show the timeline, that is the stuff you have to see right now, or you can uh, execute SQL, SQL queries and some other stuff which you can do with your trace, and that is the menu on the left side. In the middle, it's the timeline, and the timeline, uh, maybe you can al al already know from the catapult tracer, it's the same, but nicer. So the graphics is nicer and it has also additional features. The main thing is you have the time, the time flows from left to right and 
And then you have these boxes that are the trace events or called um, um, splices. And you have on the left side from top to bottom the so-called tracks. And tracks can be different things. So in the top you can see CPU 0, CPU 1 that are for every CPU you have your own track. So you see which trace events happen on which CPU. There are also other tracks, for example, tracks for the F-trace events, tracks for the kernel threads, and also then tracks for all the applications, all the processes, all the threads inside the processes. And for every track, you have these trace events, for example, at the right bottom side, you see one flame graph inside one application, inside one thread of your application. And the nice thing is that you can really, with this view, of your whole system, you can really correlate, for example, events that have, or IRQs that happens on one C CPU to something else that happens in your process or happens in another process. Because this view makes it very easy to correlate things. What does the UI give you? There are, even the old uh, Catapult UI already has keyboard um, shortcuts and mouse navigation. You can also click on these events and get additional information about the events. What is new in the Perfetta UI, you see uh, at the top of the low image, of the below image, um, it's called the track summary. So for example, if you have a track that is 10 seconds long, you zoom in into, into the trace and only um, look at a one second interval, then you with the track summary, you see at which part in your whole trace you are currently. So that is a nice thing that was added in the Perfetta UI. Another thing is that now you can pin tracks. What does it mean? For example, you have your application. Your application has a main thread. Um, something's happening on this main thread. You can click on the pin. Then this track is pinned onto the top and will never go away. And then you can scroll, scroll through all the tracks, all the processes on your system and see what is happening in parallel and that is also helping you to correlate events on your system to things that happen on your application or on some CPUs. <laughs> One thing that is also new uh, in Perfetto is that you can now execute SQL queries. So your SQL query skills are not wasted. You can use it now too, um, which you, for example, in this, in this example, I have looked at one trace event that I added to my application, which took um, different times, sometimes it was longer, sometimes it was shorter, and you can easily make, for example, with this SQL query, a histogram. So um, show a graph, um, which was the time, and sort into buckets. And so it's very easy to use, uh, to do custom, custom analysis on your slices, on your track events, on the things that happen in your trace. You can do this in the UI, but there's also a command line tool. This command line tool you can download. It's called Trace Processor, um, which is a small script. Um, you can load your trace, and then after the trace is loaded, you can also run the SQL query against your trace, and then it produces this output. This is quite handy, uh, for example, if you have regression tests and want uh, to perform various SQL queries or analyzes periodically, for example, every month or so to test regressions. So you cannot do only from the UI, but also from the command line and add it to scripts. What is also nice, what I have not seen before in the Catapult UI are the so-called flows. We already talked about that. Um, in this example, um, we look at a flow of a binder transaction. Binder is the IPC mechanism on Android, where one process can call another process or thread. And with this, you can just click on the binder transaction, on the slice of the binder um, transaction, and then get the error and see where this binder transaction was called into which other process or application. And you also get information about the destination PID, source PID, and it's really, really handled because before that, you only saw that a binder transaction was started, but you do not know where this binder transaction is then going. And with the flows, it's really nicely integrated in the UI and linked together. And there are more things to discover. We have not covered in this talk, for example, the, the risk menu item or the metric menu item or inference stats. So there, the Perfetto UI has 
another things to discover here. So this was the part of how you can analyze uh, your system and your performance problem with the Fedui. Let's summarize everything up. So Perfetto works for Linux and Android, and Perfetto is a really, really powerful tool, and in my view, in our view, a very good successor of the Catapult Tracer UI and tooling. It's really, really well integrated into the Android ecosystem, so it's really plug and play on your dev boards or even on your smartphones. This just works. Uh, yeah, it's not so well integrated into the Yocto ecosystem, so it's not installed by default, the daemons that not run by default, and you have to write your um, configuration by hand. It's not clickable in the UI. It's not yet well integrated into uh, Yocto and Linux yet, but it's very, very promising. Yeah, uh, as Stefan not mentioned, the tool is uh, not dependent on a platform. We named Android and Yocto as an example, but it's also possible to run it on basically everything else. And what can the tool do for you? I hope we give you an uh, idea what it can uh, do for you, but to sum it up, uh, we think it's a really nice and powerful ecosystem, which does not make uh, the existing tools uh, irrelevant or says we do everything better than them. It just integrates with them and uh, makes them a bit more usable. It's really battle tested by Google, so you can uh, use it without um, major bugs and don't have to battle with too much annoying uh, stuff when using it. And it has this really, really nice and powerful tracing UI with nice graphics. And one of my biggest pluses in this uh, UI is it's really, really management suitable. It makes it really easy to, for you to explain the management level, um, what happens in the system, why there are bugs, uh, what it's needed to deal with them. And this is, from my point of view, a really, really plus in this uh, situation. And it's also nice for debugging, for, uh, especially with the flows so you can see uh, the relations, the timing is uh, adjusted. You can see um, why um, things go together as they go. And this makes the tool really, really helpful for, um, from my point of view and also for you, I think. Yes. And with this, um, I think we're finished. No, not, not completely. Uh, if you want to know more about tracing um, with the old tool, we have some uh, <coughs> a bit older um, materials you can have a look at. And I think now we're really done and have some time left for questions. Yes, we have six minutes left and a bit. Yeah, first question. There, there's a oh, mic. Uh, there's there. a mic. Okay. Hey, you have mics. Who's talking? <laughs> <laughs> a few questions here. Hello. Thanks. Uh, when you do the logging, where do you store the data? Was one. In, on the target or on the host? Um, the, the question was where the data is stored, why you do the tracing, the, the data is stored on the device. And then after the tracing stops, transfer yeah. back to the development machine. We have already tools in place that we can store um, gigabytes of data, tracing data on the host. So we have a, a server client approach with TraceCMD to do um, advanced proof profiling and tracing for days. Mm -hmm. So this one, it gives me the impression that after a few hours, you, are, you, you, you cannot trace uh, anymore because you run out of space. So I think it's important to think of that as a feature in the future to do it. And the second question is, when you are doing user space profiling, are you, and you're using those uh, macros functions you said are you combining with tracing markers 
here can uh, combine them. Uh, you have basically the trace events and the usual um, F-trace events. This all is time synced. You can uh, correlate it over different processes, over different events. Um, it's basically pretty simple in the UI. Okay. Yeah. Huh. And the next is on top. Um, can you explain again with um, flows? So in the binder example, you needed somewhere in the in the setup of the flow, you had to instruct Perfetto on the um, like the emitter side, give it a request ID. But if if that's at the at the binder level, how how are, how is it relating the requester from the responder in that case? You um, have the request ID in both of them. You uh, put the same request ID in the sender and in the uh, receiver. So the UI can match it and can draw this uh, error. Um, yeah, so for mm -hmm. binder, you do not, not have to do anything because it's already implemented, it just works. But how it's mm -hmm. working is that so the sender is generating the ID and is also sending the ID to the callee. And then the callee also puts the ID into the field and yeah, then it's linked together. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you have to transfer the ID between the processes. Um, just one question. The Zoom build system on AOSP already in integrates Perfetto to sort of show you where your build is taking very long and you enable you to analyze your build process. What difficulties would you foresee to implement the same for the Yocto build process to sort of be able to use Perfetto to analyze the Yocto build process with all its steps? Uh, so yeah, you are asking uh, to to analyze the, the build of Yocto uh, with Perfetto. Um, I have not tried it yet. And uh, yeah, mostly hacks the Yocto source code and adding the Perfetto SDK and emitting the trace events and also looking uh, at the process invocations so uh, uh, with ftrace. And so yeah, I do not know how long it will take, but I think it's possible. It's definitely possible, but my question would be why tracing the Yocto build? To, to <laughs> yeah. improve the performance? Okay, yeah. That's because valid. it takes long. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a question up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh. Uh, just yeah. somewhere. Okay. Yeah. A follow on to that is are there Python bindings? Because if you were going to um, try to trace the uh, Yocto, you would probably do it in BitBake, which is written in Python. So I'm just curious if there's Python bindings. Um, do you know if there are Perfetto SDK for, uh, for Python? Python. Actually, I've I don't think so, but uh, basically, I think writing a wrapper is completely possible. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Just look at the website. I do not know, or we do not know from, from our head. Yeah, we mostly do C++ mm -hmm. and yeah. Uh, is there a uh, here in the right we have one question. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he was. Uh, it's yeah. gonna be quick. So, uh, are there any C bindings for the C plus plus header um, bindings for the API? If there are C bindings, I don't C. think so. It's C plus plus. Yes. No C bindings yeah. because it uses the R um, L R E um, stuff, and that's not available for C. Short question on slide 22. There are two reference systems for the timing. Um, what is the writer system? Seems to be a cut Let up. us have a look at the page because we don't uh, recognize them. Uh, <laughs> on top of our head. Yeah. Uh, 20. 22? 24. 24. Uh, hmm. The question again, please. Sorry. Ah. <laughs> uh, the writer system. Uh, what is it? Um, it's in this uh, table, they, uh, they uh, numbered the, the time a trace events uh, takes on the system oh. because tracing yeah. is not completely free. 
tracing adds some overhead to uh, the runtime of your system and different trace events or track events uh, have a different du uh, duration. For example, uh, the more complex this event is, for example, the lambdas, the more uh, runtime overhead it adds. And this is just uh, to give you an idea how much uh, overhead it adds. Yeah, sure. But one is the Google Pixel, and the writer one is what system? Um, the runtime on the right side is, I think, uh, an Intel machine. Okay. Thanks. Sorry, I just uh, <laughs> cut it up because uh, it was more to show you um, the different trace events and give you an idea about the runtimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. More questions? One here. Uh, so I was surprised on one of the slides you loaded a trace and that trace was an HTML format. Did I see that right? <laughs> <coughs> or is it actually stored in HTML? I guess no. But um, it's an HTML file. With okay, so the, the the trace data is really an HTML file. Yeah, okay. um, so uh, the <laughs> that's surprising. <laughs> so this comes from the systrace.py file and from the catapult tracer. If you do a trace with that, it will produce an HTML file, which has some HTML header, JavaScript in it, and then the trace content. And the workflow was then you then open this trace file with Chromium and Chrome and then the catapult UI will show up. Okay, so, and so you could also the, open it on a browser and it shows just the data and, okay. That's, that's yeah. really the workflow. You open it in a browser okay. and it works. And okay. one uh, short addition. Yes, this uh, Perfetto UI is a browser tool. It uh, is a Google browser tool. You can uh, ask about why. Um, but you can also run it completely standalone uh, in a container with no internet access if you're uh, aware of your data. So it's a bit strange. It is a browser tool, but you can tame it and uh, really use it in uh, a bit security aware context. Thanks for bringing the microphone. <laughs> How does the Perfetto UI compare to other tools like GPU with or something? GPU with takes trace files that I can generate the trace command and just standard traces and I can load them. And I see also uh, process traces and GPU um, mm -hmm. jobs and how they are scheduled. I have not used GPU this yet, so sorry, I, I do not know. Maybe. No, I don't know. Use yeah, the tool. Mostly looks the same. Mm. What's well, most the same? Mm. No, I don't know. So we are already also at the end of our time. Yeah. So mm. uh, thanks again for the microphone transporter. <laughs> <laughs>